Heavy Bowgun, the biggest of Dakas. The wide variety of possible ammo types and hefty ammo capacities make it the most versatile weapon in Monster Hunter World. Through spread and clusters, it has the biggest of dupes in Monster Hunter World, losing only to bow in some matchups. And it is also inarguably the best at crowd control in the entire game. Truly the Swiss Army knife of Monster Hunter World weapons, Heavy Bowgun can and does do it all. Except for mobility. But how do you maximize the damage on your Heavy Bowguns? Well, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And, and we're... The, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math Guys. And this is Monster Hunter Meta, Heavy Bowgun builds for the meta ammo types. In this video, we'll be giving you a quick overview on why a weapon's ammo stats make the bowguns unique in Monster Hunter World. We won't be covering the ammo types, as we just had a previous video on that. Link to the top right. We'll be showcasing the meta builds for every damage ammo type, even though only two ammo types are actually meta. This is because each ammo type has a wildly different playstyle that you might enjoy. However, since there are so many different types of ammo, this will be a two-parter video. In this video, we'll be covering Spread, Cluster, and CC Heavy Bowgun. For those Heavy Bowguns whose meta's option is a KT weapon, we'll also be including the meta build for the best craftable variant, in case RNGesus has not blessed you with that sexy glutton. I want to start off with a quick disclaimer. All the builds, analysis, breakdowns, and everything we do on the channel are not meant to tell you how to play. Unless you are a speedrunner or care about max deeps, these are not the only way to play and we are not suggesting that. The purpose of what we do is to educate and inform. It's to give you the factual information on the relative strengths of different builds and playstyles so that you can make informed decisions. If you like earplugs, use earplugs. If you want to use health boost, use health boost. Play how you like and enjoy yourself. It is a video game after all. Alright, so bowguns in Monster Hunter World are unique because each gun doesn't just have damage stats. They also have ammo stats. These ammo stats first and foremost determine which gun is meta for each ammo type, not the base attack and affinity stats. More ammo capacity means more damage uptime, faster reloads means less downtime, and lower recoil means faster fire rate which means more DPS. Alongside that, we have mods which can change your guns so drastically that they allow playstyles to exist. And on top of that, every gun will combine these factors in a different way, which will allow something to be meta. Way back in the day, I personally frame counted the fire rates and reload times and calculated the impacts of these ammo stats and mods. Several months ago, I compiled this into a handy spreadsheet to determine which build beats which after accounting for these modifiers. In fact, this spreadsheet was my first true foray into Monster Hunter math. You could say that it's the origin of this channel. Now, using the spreadsheet is a little complicated, but fortunately, Honey has integrated Jinx's numbers into the Honey Hunter World Builder. Simply select your bowgun, change the ammo count, recoil level, reload speed, and include your mods in the top right. The builder will then calculate your total effective true raw below your EFR. This total effective true raw is your EFR after accounting for all the ammo stat information you've just input. Use this when you're comparing a spread versus spread build or a pierce versus pierce build. Alright, first off let's cover a build for crowd control aka status heavy bowgun. Heavy Bowgun is hands down the best weapon in the game at applying status, which is why you see it used on many Hame style runs. A Hame style run is essentially when you CC chain a monster to death while clustering it. As for why that's called Hame, well, I don't speak Japanese, but how it's been explained to me by people who do, Hame is a very crude way of saying fuck, which is an accurate description of what you're doing to the monster. So, the best CC heavy bowgun in the game for f***ing monsters is the Zora heavy bowgun, the Magda Gemitus. It uses Sleep 2, Power 2, Sticky 2, and Sticky 3 all extremely well. It's even got great Exhaust 2 ammo if you want to be super precise with the timing of your KOs. There are no other heavy bowguns that come close to its CC output. Every other heavy bowgun has to pick two choices between good sleeps, paras, or KOs, Zora gets to do it all. The Great Bowgun comes somewhat close, but it can't use Sticky 3s. Sticky 3s only have a slightly higher motion value than Sticky 2, but they deal twice the KO per shot. 
This is the same reason why light bow guns can't compete with heavy bow gun for CC. There simply isn't a single light bow gun that uses Sticky 3 well. The new Kiar Magma heavy bow gun does have crit status, but it can't use stickies, so... R.I.P. to my youth. Zora also happens to be the second best heavy bow gun at clusters in the game. Hence why we fit peak performance into this build. After all, the CC skills are in, peak and artillery are the highest damage increases per skills we can fit in at that point. Free element slash ammo up 3 is mandatory to increase our ammo capacities on each of our ammos. The mods are 2 recall and 1 reload. These are necessary to make the aforementioned stickies good. It brings the sticky 3 recall to a plus 3 and a sticky 2 recall to a plus 2, both which are usable recoil levels. It also lowers the reload time on all of your CC ammo, which makes chains a lot less tight to perform properly. Sticky and Clusters also both don't get affected by damage mods, which are really the only thing you'll be using to hurt things. And Shields shouldn't be that necessary because you'll most likely be CC chaining a monster and the range on CC ammo is very large. If you do want to run a Shield mod however, drop the Reload mod, the two Recall mods are necessary. And no non-elemental boost because this does low dragon ammo. You cannot use non-elemental boost even on non-elemental ammo types if your bowgun can load any kind of elemental ammo. This doesn't apply to status ammo though, which is good because pretty much every bowgun in the game uses status ammo. Next up is the most notorious build in the game, Clusters. The best cluster heavy bowgun in the game is the Joe heavy bowgun. The Devil Joe Heavy Bowgun shares the Cluster, Sticky, and Sleep ammo stats with the Zora, but coupled with a much higher base roll. In fact, several Heavy Bowguns have the same Cluster ammo stats as both of them. Joe is best for one simple reason, it has insanely high natural roll. The concept behind optimizing Cluster builds is very simple. Stack as much roll as possible. It is the only thing that affects cluster damage. Clusters don't crit and artillery does not affect them. Artillery does affect your wyvern and sticky ammo, which is nice, but this is a cluster build, so it's at the bottom of the priority list. Sticky and wyvern ammo are supplementary ammos and also do scale slightly with raw. And yes, you do see that correctly. This is a seven attack deco set. Cluster builds have historically always required the most attack decos out of every set in the game, but fear not, you can actually do this without them. Cluster deals such high damage that even with zero attack decos, you will still kill things in under two minutes. So feel free to sub whatever else you want, or just use Honey's Builder to find a set that works with your decorations. For the mods, it doesn't matter all that much. Clusters give zero fucks about your mods. Not a single one will affect clusters in any way. Even shield mods, you cannot block while you're in the cluster crouch. And you have to get out of the crouch, which takes almost a whole second before you can even block, so you're better off just rolling anyway. Generally though, you go either with 3 close range mod for more wyvern wake up damage, as the close range mods do affect wyvern ammo, or you go 2 recall, 1 reload if you want to use sticky 3 well. Again, no non-elemental boost because it loads dragon ammo. The augments can be any combination of damage or health augments. Now the actual healing from the health mods in general is not that high because of an internal timer mechanic. Basically when the cluster payloads detonate within a few frames of each other, you only get one proc of the healing. However, there are rare situations when the clusters kind of spread out and detonate at different times that you get insane amounts of healing from it. And it definitely seems possible from some speedruns that it's possible for latency in the server to cause the timers to get a little off sync. And Jin Farai, one of the beloved regulars in our Discord server, as well as arguably the best cluster speedrunner in the world, he does prefer using health augments because of the peak performance maintenance it gives you. So up to you which one you want to use. You will still kill things stupid fast either way. For those of you wondering why the Xeno Luna heavy bowgun isn't featured here because it does have natural spare shot, it's because the roar is so low compared to the Devil Joe Heavy Bowgun. The difference is so big in fact that a Xeno Luna Heavy Bowgun with maxed out peak performance and attack boost and damage augments deals less damage than a Dark Devourer with augments while naked. There simply aren't enough raw increasing skills in the game that you can stack to make the Xeno Luna catch up to the huge gap in true raw difference. 
Finally, the spread heavy bowgun. So the strongest spread heavy bowgun is unsurprisingly the monster blender itself, the R7 glutton heavy bowgun. Here is the meta set. Yes, you see that correctly once again, 6 whole attack decos. Heavy bowgun loves them attack decos. Fear not though, we do have another meta set that is a little less thirsty coming up next. But this covers all the bases, all of our damage multipliers are maxed out for a juicy 382.2 EFR. Doesn't seem that juicy compared to melee weapons, but that's because it's not including ammo multipliers. With 10% more damage per shot from the spread shots up, and 30% more damage from the close range mods multiplicatively, a total of 43% more damage per shot, your spread 3 shots will deal a fuck ton of damage. And with an average of 2 extra shots per clip due to the spare shot procs on average, this puts the effective clip size at 10. With a normal reload as well as plus 1 recall on the firing, this gives you 0.968 shots per second. And with 56 motion value per spread 3 shot, that is absolutely mental. What were you thinking, Ryozo? As a comparison point, Switch Axe's staple overhead slash to double slash combo while amped is only 37.83 motion value per second. And it takes hits to build up the amp, it drains resources to do, it's shorter range, it's longer animation and commitment by a huge degree, it doesn't get that 43% extra damage per shot bonus. It's just, yeah. Glutton dumb good. Here's a less conditional affinity and less attack boost deco set. The EFR is marginally lower on this set at 381.5. It's not a lot, but in some cases due to how rounding works, can make a difference of 1 damage per pellet. 7 damage per shot is actually pretty decent considering Glutton's fire rate. But it doesn't use max might, so it's better if you roll a lot. Although the nature of Glutton's gameplay means that if you play very clean, you basically never roll because you'll just flinch lock the monster to death. Plus, come on, how will you flex your 6 juicy attack deckers then? If you do not have a glutton from KT, the best craftable spread option is the Nogi Luna heavy bow gun. Not much to say about this build, uses 2 recoil mods to hit plus 1 because it's a higher DPS bonus than the last 2 close range mods. For clarity's sake, the KT horn heavy bow gun and the Kyar horn heavy bow gun are both better than the Nogi Luna for spread 3. But those aren't craftable. This is the best craftable option. It also loads sticky ammo pretty well, so if you want to mix that into your gameplay for some fun KOs, there you go. And again, no NEB because it loads dragon ammo. And that about does it guys. Those are the meta builds for every single meta ammo type Heavy Bowgun has. With these, you will truly be dealing the maxist of deeps in Monster Hunter World. Seriously, Heavy Bowgun is so overpowered. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments which video you'd like us to do next. If you're looking for somebody to hunt with, check out our Discord, The Mathalos Nest. You can also check me out on Twitch, where I stream almost every day. Shout out to Honey at HoneyHuntersWorld.com for providing the tools we use to make sets. And thank you to Ven, Heika, Cheklim, Yoshi Cho, John Cohen, Ken Alvarez, Robin, Bram Orsel, Lightweight, Skylar Yang, Lupin, Mongus, Lord Sidonay, Kin Jung Poon, and everyone else on Patreon who's been supporting the channel. We appreciate all the support you've been giving us. The support means the world to us and allows us to continue existing as a channel in the face of the impending potential adpocalypse coming. We've got some new sets coming up soon, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when those go live, and we'll see you in the next one. Happy hunting, hunters! Bye! Bye.